Hey, it's Tim, Pickup Truck Plus SUV Talk, and I got a cool one for you today. I have a truck, a 1997 Dodge truck, that has nearly 1.5 million miles on it. I have the owner. We're on our third Cummins engine, working on our fourth. Now hold on, let that sink in for a minute, go get a cup of coffee, a cold drink, whatever. <laughs> Sit back, relax. This is a mind bender for you, because you know, this is not a reliable truck, Gary. This is not, it's not supposed to be reliable. This is Dodge was known as not. Oh yeah, rusting off, the, rusting right, right. away, and the engine's still sitting there. But you have done this. You have made this work, <laughs> and we were just we, we've had lots of good conversations about this. So let's let's start with this. Let's start with first of all, walk us around this truck and talk to us. You bought this brand new. Correct. Okay, so you bought a brand new dealership. You've done the maintenance at dealership maintenance for yourself. Yes. You've done the maintenance for yourself or both. Oh, no, I don't take it to a dealer for anything. Okay, so, so no dealer. <laughs> we have all by himself. And so let's talk about what this is. So this is a 1997. Um, we had a great story earlier with the 5500. Can you, can you share that story one more time, 5500? Because it was, it was pretty funny. Well, I made those, those placards way back in about 98 or 99 just to mess with the Ford guys. Dodge didn't even make a 5500 uh, then. In, uh, but the only person it really fooled was a, uh, a Dodge mechanic when it went back for a recall. He came out at the uh, end of the waiting area and said, your truck's ready. And I said, okay. And, and he said, I've never seen a 5500 before. I said, well, I said, you didn't? I said, I bought it here. And he goes, yeah. I said, I said but there's only about 200 of them. It was a uh, pilot project that Dodge wanted to see if, if they wanted to make a heavier duty pickup. And I just happened to have one, came stock with gauges, stock higher horsepower, and uh, he bought it. And as far as I know, he still believes it. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's such a great story. So, so we have a dually set up. We have uh, what do we have? Sixteens, right? You have what do you have on these? You have you have Michelins now. Just Michelins, right? I've talked to many guys who've done million mile trucks, and the Michelins. One guy told me he says, you know, the French can do a lot of things. But they can build some damn good tires. Yeah, I've got as much as one hundred twenty thousand miles off the front tires, and I normally get eighty to ninety on the rears, and. Uh, I've, I've never had a blowout. Yeah. I've had flats because I've run over things, but I've never had a blowout. Yeah, I've talked to many million-mile truck guys, and they say the same thing. They get amazing mileage out of those tires. So looking to get some tires last long time, those French guys, they don't yeah. do it. They're a little more expensive up front, but if you calculate the price per mile, they're, they're a lot less than your... China bombs that <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> that you'll find at the local discount store. <laughs> now uh, we should say we're in Texas, but you drive all over the place, and we just have a little rust in the cab corner here. And that's my fault. And that's your fault. That's my fault. When I bought it, I put some mud flaps down here, and I drilled them out, and I didn't seal it. Okay. And uh, unknown to me, that's a collection point for leaves, so water seeped in there. The leaves stayed in there and rot and rotted it out from the inside. I've, it, both sides are like that, but it's the only rust on the truck. Okay. Yeah. So let's uh, keep going around. We have extended cab, uh, Laramie. We'll talk about interior here in a second. But I, I was going to say I was looking at the the body panels and it looks pretty straight. Like I don't see a whole lot of dents or dings in this at all. Yeah, I've managed to put a couple dents in it. This is from a gooseneck trailer. I. And I made a big U-turn on, mm -hmm. and uh, this is from a uh, mailbox I backed into. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. Whoops. <laughs> the dents are from t doing sharp turns. Those are the, those are the uh, uh, brackets on a travel trailer for, right. the, for the uh, weight distribution. It turned a little too sharp, and the brackets hit my bumper on both both sides several times. And we should explain that you you've used this truck for work in that you haul RVs and boats. And RVs, like yeah. boats, horse trailers, new and used all over the country, up into Canada. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's 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 how a lot of people get these mileage. But you have a cool sticker on this too. With the this is how I found him. He's on the turbo diesel register. He had a million miles there. 
uh, that is that's cool. I need to get another plate. I got I have another sticker, and I I need to contact them and get a a, a four hundred thousand mile license plate, and then I'll put my million mile add on sticker because they don't they don't issue anything over five hundred thousand. Right, <laughs> right. So and let, I mean on the undercarriage here. Well, it's it's still pretty good shape down there. Pretty clean overall. Yeah. Yeah. Not not too much rust down there at all. Um, you can see, you know, those cast iron pieces aren't coated at all, so they're gonna get right get some rust when the paint chips off. But yeah, I think overall it's pretty nice, pretty nice shape. And you have one of my favorite features. Now, if you happen to be um, a vertically challenged, that's the word we have. Vertically challenged, like I am. <laughs> This, this, my friends, is the step. That's that's the getting the stuff in the bed. I, you have all your cleaner stuff back there, and that's a handy addition. Well, it's especially handy when I launch the boat, so I don't have to go wading to get right. into the boat trailer. Right. So, but yeah, I do have to climb up in there every now and then when I've got a fifth wheel or a horse a gooseneck in it. If I have to get up in there, that's perfect. I did have one on the other side, but it broke over the years, and I just... Yeah. It was it, never a real priority for me. <laughs> so, right, right. <laughs> as long as I had one, I was good to go. And have you painted this at all? Is that just original paint? No, this, unfortunately, I can't afford a paint job. So, this is... Well, I mean, I, I, it looks pretty decent, though, still. I mean, you still some nicks here and there from you know, the miles oh, yeah. you put on, but it's not like it's so worn out. Well, I quit. Wa I quit waxing it when it start when the clear coat went away. Okay. It was, uh, and you can tell from the front that a lot of people don't think there's a lot of dirt or abrasives in the air, but you can take a look on the front. I used to have a an air dam up there, yeah, a bug deflector, sure. and you can see where the bug deflector used to be, where the paint is good. Oh yeah. And where the right where the paint wore off. Yep. Yep. The bumpers never hit anything, and that's as shiny as it gets. That's okay. just that's just abrasion from from uh, the dirt and stuff that's in the air. Have you replaced this grill at all? Yeah, I've replaced yeah, it two or gets, three times. Right, that gets really messed up with that. Yeah, chrome plastic just was never made for longevity. No, no, not at all. And we have the deer whistles, I see, because yeah. we do some stuff in yeah northern part. I don't know if they work, but I tell you what, it's nice having them, just in case. I was in uh, Idaho one time, and an elk was walking down the side bank, down onto the road, and and I and he saw me coming, and he heard. I guess he heard the whistle because he just stopped. And when I drove by, he walked behind me. So I think they work. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, <it's... laughs> and south Southwest Texas is covered with deer in the fall, and I've. I've never had a problem with one, and you see them dead on the highway there all the time, and I've never hit one. Okay, let's let's check out the inside. So, is this the original interior? Uh, the seat's been recovered twice, I think. Sure. I need to recover the back. Right, right. But I mean, uh, what's going to happen? Carpets are still original. I've replaced the floor mats a couple times. Sure. It's uh, and the, these are the original, all the original gauges. Oh yeah. yeah. Some gauges get around the sun a little bit, and then you can see you're all set up. What do you have up here for your gauges up there? It's a pyro, a boost gauge, and a fuel pressure gauge. I use a fuel pressure gauge. Uh, well, a lot of people use them to uh, determine when they need a new fuel filter. When your fil when your pressure starts falling, the filter's getting clogged. It's time to change it. Okay. Yeah. All right. I know they're dying to look underneath the hood. I mean, there's like three engines here. <laughs> we got to talk about this. Well, wait no longer. We'll look at this. Well, actually, it's only had really two. Right. My second engine was a uh, was one I bought online that was supposed to be low mileage. When this, I took the the original engine out at eight hundred thousand, and it was burning a quart of oil every eight hundred miles. Okay. So I bought an engine online that was supposedly low mileage. It used, and I, I put a hundred thousand miles on it, but it used almost as much oil as the old one. And in the meantime, I rebuilt my original engine. I had it rebuilt. They used cheap parts. The rings never seated. 
So I had to pull it out, and then I re I rebuilt this one myself. Okay. So it's it's got about five hundred thousand on it. Okay, that's uh. <laughs> that's just a lot of you know because I mean the, the story is that Cummins always lasts a truck and you've had used a lot of oil in Cummins engines and you you said you rebuilt this one yourself yes so do you have much experience in mechanic work or just handy like that well this engine's the first diesel I've ever rebuilt but I've rebuilt lots of gas engines okay. I have a board and balance 350 Chevy in my other pickup that I that I rebuilt a long time ago. I've even rebuilt an engine in a lawnmower. I rebuilt an engine in a Cadillac one time that has the sleeve, the removable sleeves and the old nap, I think they were called Navistar or yeah, something. Yeah. And the sleeves came out like a like a, a big diesel engine, the whole, the whole piston and the, everybody said you can't rebuild them and I went, why not? <laughs> so. Challenge accepted. <laughs> Okay, so we were talking a little bit about oil changes. Now, I don't think you're part of the 3,000, 36, or was it 3,000 no, miles? That's, that's a total waste of, of oil. Okay, yeah. so what are, what are you doing? I have a uh, uh, fleet guard, fil it's a dual filter. It has a built-in uh, bypass filter. And I change it about every 15,000 miles, and I change my oil drains about 30,000. And the oil, oil sample analysis says the oil is still good at 30,000, but it is so dark that it just bugs me. And I, I'm still kind of old school. Right. So I'm going, well, maybe I ought to change it. But the biggest thing is I, it's, just a, it's just ugly oil. After, after 12 or 14,000 miles, it never gets any lighter. So, but so that is uh, thirty thousand. That's an additional zero, and no other oil companies don't like to hear that. But that's what he does. That's, so that's the only reason that the <laughs> three thousand mile changes are now. Well, even the bigger trucks now, the new the new diesels that are coming in eighteen wheelers have seventy and eighty thousand mile oil drains because it's it's all about the filtration it's not right. about the oil at all right right so what else, other things like uh have you lubed at the front end do you have do you do other uh maintenance on this besides just oil i lube the front end usually every time i get back from a trip okay so sometimes it's five thousand miles sometimes it's twenty thousand depends on how long i've been out on the road but, but uh I've only replaced my ball joints three times, you know, and uh, one time was because I got a set of cheap ones, mm -hmm. and uh, I'll never do that again. You know, you'd, quality is right. it's, sometimes it's a little more expensive, but in the long run, it's really cheaper. So. What about transmission? Have you done any transmission work? <laughs> I went through 12 NV4500s before I finally found out how to put a G56 six-speed in it. Uh, those 12? 12. 12. Well, the first one really didn't fail. Fifth gear just fell off. Okay. But the other, the other 11 failed to minor, minor, needing minor repair to be in just a chunk of metal big pieces in the bottom of the case with only fourth fourth I drove from Salt Lake City to here one time with only fourth gear because <laughs> <laughs> all the all the rest of the gears were in the bottom of the case oh. and uh, so uh, somebody on the TDR put a G56 and the the only the biggest reason I waited so long is cuz the speedometer pickup on these is on the transmission housing and the newer 6 speeds the NV5600 that Dodge came in the speedometer was off the ABS sensor on the differential okay so I didn't know how to make the speedometer work and because of DOT requirements, I had to have a mileage readout because you put that in your log books. And uh, somebody on the turbo diesel register put a G56 in and wired in a, uh, uh, a box. Uh, 
the name of it escapes me right now. But anyway, he sent me the instructions for that. I found a G56 in Dallas and uh, put it in. It only, it required a new clutch and pressure plate, obviously. The G56 has a dual uh, mass flywheel or something. I put in a real heavy duty uh, s single mass flywheel, new clutch from South Bend, and uh, everything bolted in except the uh, transmission cross member had to be modified a little bit. That cost me 40 bucks. And the tra drive shaft had to be lengthened and a, and a, and a flange. Mm -hmm. it, uh, it, didn't have a, it doesn't have a slip yoke, it's, it has a flange. So the, trans the drive shaft had to be redone. But that, uh, that was uh, over 600,000 miles ago, and that tra the transmission is, is solid. It's, as far as I'm concerned, it's the best six-speed out there. Yeah. And this is two-wheel drive, right? Two-wheel drive, drive, so drive correct. Is this a stock radiator? This radiator looks huge. No, this is a radiator I bought in Oregon. It's a four-row uh, icebox radiator that... Uh, Wow. They don't even, I guess they don't even make them anymore. The original radiator sprung a leak, and the OEM replacement was only two row. The original was three row. Well, the two row wasn't doing the job. Sometimes I'm grossed at 22, 23,000 pounds. I work out west a lot, and, and it just wasn't doing it. So I found the icebox radiator website they custom built this one it doesn't it's got steel <laughs> tanks on yeah, it yeah yeah and and it is it it's is solid. literally it is so heavy that i cannot even if it's empty i cannot lift it myself <laughs> i need i need a help to uh to lift it out there and i don't think i well i'll have to take it out on my next engine change but yeah, so all right, speaking of this, you have one more engine pl change planned at least, well, I'm going to say at least because he's already gone through several, so hold on. Well, so, why, at least why, one more. Right, what are we doing with this next one? Well, the next one will just be a basically stock rebuild like this. The only thing that isn't stock in this is the fuel plate in the injection pump. Everything, the, the turbo, the injectors, everything is, is, is stock. Uh, it, is there something wrong with this one? Is that why you're switching? It's, it's starting to use a little oil, and it leaks. Uh, I guess my gasket ad, uh, installation is is a little lacking. It's it's got an oil leak somewhere that I can't find, mm. and it's it's it, if I've got to pull it out to put re, to put gaskets in it. I might as well just replace the engine. So sure, yeah. I bought a I bought an engine up in uh, Illinois uh, several months ago. I just got it back from the machine shop, and I'm got all the parts together, and I'm gonna uh, put it together. And when I get some spare time, I'll swap them out. There's not, this is running fine. Yeah. In fact, I just got back from Ontario, Canada. I pulled a big horse trailer up there. And, uh, but like I say, it's starting to use a little oil. I, I don't know if it's burning more or leaking more. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, with 500000 I figure I've got my money out of it. Right, right. And like you said, if you got to change gas anyway, just pull it all out. It makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Um, and, and you said earlier that, you know, your mileage that you're doing this is all DOT. You have to write it all down. And that, that's always a question that comes up with these videos. They're like, you got to prove it. These guys are lying about million-mile trucks. And I'm like, well, A... He has nothing to gain by proving it. I'm not giving paying him any money. And B, it's all DOT. So that I mean, you know, there's no there's no argument about what the miles on this thing is. No. Um, anything else we've done to this truck? Um. As for modifications, that's pretty much it. It's the the uh, the differential, the rear end in it. I've I've put uh, three pinion seals in it and two sets of axle seals. Other than that. I haven't had it. It's the only original piece of a in the drivetrain. <laughs> I do have a big uh, mag high tech cover on it, though. It increased the oil capacity from four to seven quarts, and I. Uh, 
And I, and I do have a preference for oil in that. I use royal purple. Mm. One reason is you, it comes with its own additive for uh, anti-spin. Okay. And you don't have to deal with that nasty smelling crap that they, <laughs> right. that you've got to put in normal oil. But uh, it's uh, it's worked well for me. I don't have any, t- any complaints. And and speaking of oil, uh, we talked a little bit off camera on this, but uh, you just buy whatever on sale. I buy whatever's on sale. And diesel yeah. fuel, you buy whatever. You buy it anywhere. The yep. Oil is a commodity. They're, they're, uh, additive packages may differ between companies, but they all do the same thing. They all meet SAE specifications. So, I mean, you can buy fuel name brand fuel or you can buy fuel at walmart but all that fuel came from the same the same same place you know up the road right they just came there and they just came into town on different trucks but they don't every walmart doesn't have their own refinery or you know or sunoco or whoever right they're all it all comes in the same place yeah they all came from dinosaurs there's like fancy dinosaurs and like poor dinosaurs they're both <laughs> the same dinosaurs um all right that's cool so any uh let's see how about brakes the last thing i was gonna ask you brakes do you go through you must go through brakes quite a bit i don't go through a lot of brakes i have an exhaust brake okay uh coming back in back in the 90s sold an exhaust brake called the J- jacobs brake and which has become Jake break in the big truck world. Sure, sure. But uh, Jacobs made this one. There's two or three other brands on the market. And uh, in fact, I've had to replace the butterfly in it because the original one, after about a million miles, the spring wore out in it, and it wasn't it wasn't retarding my braking. So I found a guy that had had one for sale, and I replaced it. But uh, You'd be surprised how much br- longer a bra- the brakes will last with when, it, you, when you have an exhaust brake. Sure. And All right. All right. This is the final question, the money question. You've had this truck for a long time. Yeah. There are a lot newer trucks in the market. You've gone through multiple engines. It makes sense for you to say, I don't know, buy a new truck, but you don't seem like the guy who wants to do that. No way. I don't, I don't want to mess with DEF. And I want an engine that I can work on. This is a mechanical engine. I can do just about anything I need to do on it. A uh, computer-controlled engine, I read about them in the TDR and on Cummins Forum and every other Dodge Forum there is. They're constantly messing with the ECM. They've got problems all the time, fuel delivery problems. Lift pump problems. This is a mechanical lift pump. I I time change them at 300,000 miles. They're still working, but I don't want to be stranded in Oregon with a with a lift pump that only costs a hundred dollars. So at about 300,000, I swap them out. It takes I don't know a couple hours. I, I modified my fender liner so I can just take off my left front tire and take the liner out and I can reach straight in front of me and replace that stuff. So it, it's it's an easy job. I even modified this so I could work on it. I made my fan sh- I cut my mat- fan shroud off. I take off six screws and I can get I can replace a fan belt and everything and water pump in in way less time. It's easier to get to. So I, I get the feeling that you're going to tell me this is not for sale. Not for sale. <laughs> well, I also I also have a fifth wheel and I have a boat. And in Texas, you can double trailer. Okay. I don't, you're not going to do that with a with a half ton pickup. Right. So even even though I'm kind of semi retired from the driving business, I still have my RV and my boat. And uh, you know, just in last December, I. Took them both down to South Texas where it was warm and went fishing. So it's. Oh, that sounds that sounds nice. Uh, <laughs> last December I was shoveling snow. It was not the same experience. <laughs> <laughs> so hey, thanks for watching. Make sure you check the video out over here, website down below. As always, again, thanks for watching. I'll see you down the road.